they gonna stay and watch? Oh, he's just gonna go kill kids. Holy cow, he just killed all those kids. Hey everyone, welcome to Elevate Your Power Level, where we analyze the artwork and life lessons from anime. I'm Coach Donnie, and I'm an art teacher, former animator, volleyball coach, and volleyball player. In this video, I'll be reacting to Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1, Episode 11. I thought it was really cool how many of you were just as fascinated with Nanami because he is an interesting character being the typical Japanese salary man, but then also being very powerful and very direct and honest. And I kind of like people who are more straightforward, kind of like Kageyama from Haikyuu. Even though he's really emotional, at least you don't have to worry about predicting whether what he says is what he really means. And I'd rather have someone be very truthful, even if they don't deliver it the best way, because I at least know what they're thinking versus trying to guess what they're thinking. So I'm curious to see how this fight goes, and I hope they don't kill him off too early, because he seems to be losing this fight. And let's get this Jujutsu party started. Ooh, that hoof is so creepy. At his living. Now he's just out of time. He doesn't want to work overtime as a salary man. Oh, but the fists get lit. Does this mean that he increases a, a like a grade level? Overtime mode. I wonder if his salary actually does increase when he has to go overtime when he works for those schools. I just love that really thick, sketchy line on the outside of the energy aura, and it just looks so much like a manga illustration that's moving. Draws a line along the target. 7 to 3 creates a weak point at that location. All right, we got to study this guy's technique. It's interesting in this diagram, it usually doesn't have brown eyes but they put Nami's glasses eyes on here. I can create this line along more than just their full height and wingspan. So what does this mean? All right, this is getting confusing, so I just gotta see what he does to really understand what's going on. So he can ex exert this curse technique on any object. Ugh, you hear that? When he licked his lips, that sound was just so creepy. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is a creepy guy. So, is he being chased or is he just running around? So, just a single punch. Okay, so we found a line on the wall. What's the point of that? So we struck a weak point in the wall to smash him with all the bricks. Oh! So he cut off his leg. Wait, I don't get that. I thought he was supposed to kill him. Not just injure him. Oh, okay. So he maimed him and then he put the, the bricks on him. Join our channel memberships and be a part of an exclusive interactive community where you receive early access to all my reaction videos five days before they get released, behind the scenes content, members only polls, monthly watch parties where you get to interact directly with me, and uncensored reaction videos with 100% opacity for an extra level of enjoyment. You'll also receive exclusive loyalty badges and custom emojis just for members. So click that join button below to enjoy your members only perks today. Today. But my guess is that he didn't really kill him. That character is too interesting to eliminate so early. Narrow minded. Let's see who's actually narrow minded. Oh, those little, those little mini curses are so cute. I like how Itadori is actually just kind of awkward. Oh, 
So maybe this doll was a former Jujutsu sorcerer. But he told him to be nice to them. You know what, this reminds me of the conversation between when Hinata from Haikyuu meets Kenma. So that emo hair guy is Kenma and Itadori is Hinata, like that vibrant energy. Am I the only one that thought about this parallel? Or maybe I'm just thinking about Haikyuu so much because the movie hasn't come out yet. But he's so nice. And now they get a chance to sit, talk, and maybe bond a little bit so he doesn't turn into a bad guy. <laughs> oh, that's right. He, he's, he had us watch all those B-rated horror movies as part of his study. Oh, they're connecting. Wait, what? I was so caught up on, huh? A way to enjoy. I was so caught up. Bingo. Okay, at first I thought this guy said, have you seen the entire series? Like, he's listening in on their conversation about the B-rated horror films, and he's like, ooh, have you seen the whole series? Ugh. So that's probably the experiment. Oh, the interesting thing that is he's sensitive to gore. I wonder if that's going to come up later. He's not desensitized to gore, which is a good thing. Still a little bit human. Would he ask him, take me with you next time? This is so great. Itadori is just wanting to, to truly be friends with him, even though this kid might be a potential enemy of his. And maybe he's caught off guard that someone actually wants... Oh, is he crying? That someone actually wants to be nice to him and get to know him. I can't tell if that's sweat or if it's a tear. I wonder if the mom neglects him at home. I asked you. Oh. So maybe she is a negligent mom. Not to say that people who smoke are negligent, but the fact that he's so upset that she couldn't honor his request. Oh, what? Oh, Itadori doesn't have a family, so he would love to join them. A food scene? So this guy has stitches on his forehead. Maybe he was also patched up. Like pieced together like this guy. I wonder by learning from him, does he mean that he 
took some information from him and powered up, like was able to level up his own power from that. That's an interesting detail here, and it's really these small details that make a great storytelling environment. So this car is parked, he's speaking urgently on the phone, and his hazard lights are on. He could easily just be parked somewhere, and then, you know, no hazard lights going on. But the fact that the hazard lights are blinking communicates that there's something urgent or an emergency happening, because he had to pull over where he wasn't supposed to, and then turn the hazard lights on. And that's just a great way to emphasize how important this conversation is. But we don't know who he's talking to. Oh, he finally caught the little guy. <laughs> oh, he's fearful of Gojo. Wait, Nanami saw him, but if the adult of adults, okay, so he fears Nanami more than Gojo. <laughs> what the? Oh, he got injured in the fight. I'm assuming this is Nanami without the glasses. <laughs> Let's look at that facial expression again. He's already looks kind of careful because his eyes are half open. And then the fact that he has such a blank look, that's really what it feels like to have your spirit leave your body momentarily when you know you're in trouble. Like when you're trying to sneak by into a place you're not supposed to at home, and your parents catch you, you're like, <gasps> to communicate that level of intensity of emotion, that's really what makes a great animator. They did a good job there. So that it was Nanami. Okay, so it is a cursed spear. Not just a human. Oh, before he reaches a more powerful stage of domain expansion. So he's not just a salary man, he's someone that really does con is concerned for his job to make sure he regulates and doesn't let these cursed spirits get out of control. <laughs> oh, so he is neglected. Mom is an alcoholic at home. <laughs> so he's just doing ad lib with objects. Well, we all knew that this kid would have a backstory, so he has a mom who... Oh, and he has to take care of her. It's something to, to understand about people who suffer from alcoholism. I truly don't think that anyone is born wanting to be hooked on drugs or addicted to alcohol. These are all symptoms of deeper trauma that we experience in our lives, and we don't know how to cope with it or don't have the tools or maybe just don't have the, the resources and the time. So we 
go for the quick fix of drugs and alcohol to take us out of that moment for a little bit of relief, not knowing that when we sober up, it just comes back 10 times. But these moments, you know, they make me really sad because as a teacher, I, I've seen a lot of these types of families and kids that are struggling in school that, that have deeper issues and then get a chance to meet the parents or maybe I never get to meet the parents because they're never available or maybe they don't care. You know, I don't think it's necessary because they're trying to be uh, bad parents, just struggling with things deeper than what's on the surface. So getting to know more about this emo kid and why he is the way he is, but the fact that he still wants to care about his mom means he has a good heart. So maybe the dad left or the dad died. And she's still smoking, even though he just asked her to. So that was a flashback then. I forgot if Itadori was a was abandoned as a kid, or maybe his parents died. I know he was close to his grandparents. Moshi moshi. <laughs> They're gonna watch another B-rated horror film. That was a cool little effect. So as he's talking to Itadori, right? Itadori was trying to be polite, talk away in a little bit of privacy, not towards the room. And he has two turns here. So first turn, he turns and leans, which is very realistic. You're not just turning like a robot. You're usually kind of partially turning with your shoulders too. And then he does the full body turn as he's talking secondly to really address him. So that was a really cool detail. But this kid has some loneliness and darkness inside of him. Yeah, Itadori has too pure of a heart, like Hinata. Once you do it, well, yeah, once you kill one person, it's a lot easier to keep going and be, become numb to that. So he's very weary of that line, but then this kid probably feels guilty because he wants to kill his bullies, but his bullies are already dead. Uh, more backstory here. We didn't really get to see what food she cooked. You know, guys know how much I love those food scenes. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's the finger. Oh no. The Sato. Sakura High School incident. Oh, a finger was left behind. Why was that finger there to begin with? I still don't know who Yoshino Nagi is. Interesting. So this already... Transfigured people, like manipulating their souls. 
So he uses existing humans that are still alive, just morphing their body. And that's a great way to intense that communicate. So we, we go from intense determination to, oh no, like fear and dread. And you see the animation of the eye glistening. And the way you do that eye glistening animation is you just draw two eyes. So one eye is small, maybe one eye is bigger and smaller, or maybe slightly different shape. And you just keep alternating those two images and you get that vibrating sensation there to show that anxiety. Very easy technique. Wait, does that mean that the mom really did die? I can't tell. There's purple on her head, so maybe she did die. That is powerful. Being a child is not a sin, meaning if you're not ready, even if you want to help other people, but you're not capable, that's okay. So, did the mom die? Wish they were a little bit more clear, so I'm less confused. Interesting. So this stitched guy is... Uh, this, I'm so confused. I thought that Itadori and Nanami were outside the apartment trying to figure out what's going on. But now we see this curse guy trying to console and convert this the kid. Oh man, he's trying to con just convince him to kill somebody. Maybe by killing his mom, getting him to find someone else to be upset and try to kill. Notice that a lot of principles in these animes are bald. I wonder if that's a truth or that's just just a fun pattern anime likes to, to show. So this must be the master bully. Oh, so some people can see it and some people can't. So is this his domain expansion technique? So they're trying to, to trigger being detected for whatever reason. So they're trying to bring Sakuna out. So to eat the door, eat another finger. This is this is very confusing storytelling. Okay, so Yoshino, maybe Yoshino is that kid's name, and then. What are they gonna stay and watch? Oh, he's just gonna go kill kids. Holy cow, he just killed all those kids? That 
That guy looks familiar. Oh, that's the teacher of Yoshino. Okay. Okay, now I know who Yoshino is. He's the emo kid. Whoa. What is that? Oh, maybe those are cigarette burns from the bully. And he's trying to show him that, look, you were never there to protect me. Instead, you allowed this to happen. Oh, he has a chance to kill Shota. But Shota senses a darkness in him. Okay, so the guy with the stitches, the curse planted the finger, Sakuna's finger, which attracted another curse spirit to kill the mom. And the guy with the stitches is trying to frame Shota as the person that put the finger there so the mom could get killed. So he's trying to convert Yoshino to the dark side by giving him that motive that this bully is the reason why your mom died. Now he's able to lift him up. He's getting stronger with the cursed energy. Oh. Is he gonna kill him? Hitori knows once he kills him, he crosses over to a point of no return. Junpei. Jellyfish, interesting. One thing I love about this anime is they play upon real experiences that everyday youth go through, such as bullying, loss, tragedy, and so creative to create demons and cursed spirits out of all this evil emotion that accumulates that forms these kind of like demon curses and how easy it is for us to give in to the darkest parts of ourselves due to all the pain that we experience. And these are really, really a dark, serious adult themes that are communicated and I always wonder if the average Japanese youth or even the average 10 year old that's watching this understands the complexity of the psychology for these anime or are they just enjoying the good animation the fight scenes and just the, the interesting storyline so but th yeah this was a, just a nice part of the story where you got to learn more about Yoshino's backstory and kind of his motivations and how there are two major dark forces competing for Yoshina you got the guy with the stitches that's trying to convert him to the dark side and then eat Dory part of the sorcerers on the good side trying to help him keep his humanity and not make that first vengeance kill which will completely turn him to the dark side. I like Star Wars. I think we all want to fight for justice but we end up pursuing it in constructive ways or destructive ways so that's the only way I can put it.